explain about yourself yeah, good morning sir i am tarun i am from vishakhapatnam i have graduated from avanti engineering of institution from vizag with a cgpa of 7.2 really? and after completion of my in a stream of mechanical engineering so as a mechanical engineer i am very much interested in the technical side so i have decided to learn it, learn coding so one of my friends suggested to learn java okay so i so how much read, how much you can read on yourself java in java i can read I, I can read, out of five, I can read three point five sir. Up okay. to now, good. So explain about the concepts which you like in Java. I'm very, very, very much good in uh, as uh, method in methods constructors. Up okay, to tell me about constructors. Constructor. Constructor is a special method which is of the same name mm -hmm. and it, it 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 does not have any return type. Mm -hmm. So and for to initialize the object, we need a constructor. Okay. And to and to load the data when the object is created we go for a constructors so we have a five types of constructor one is default constructor no or constructor augmented constructor parameterized constructor constructor chaining and copy constructor so what is co constructor chaining constructor with the help of the this of and super of we can do constructor chaining hmm. this of is a keyword which is used to call the current class constructor in another constructor like we have a noar constructor <coughs> and a parameterized constructor in a, within the class to call the if we want to call the noar constructor in the augmented con parameterized constructor we use a this of this of keyword okay to call the parent so class constructor we have, we have okay we have this comma super is a keyword so, and you have mentioned this of and super of right yeah. so what is the difference between this of and super of like this super and this of and super of this this and super are the keyword this is a keyword which is used to initialize the current class object okay and su super is a keyword to invoke the parent class data members we use the super key with the help of the super key okay what is copy constructor copy constructor means if we want to use the same same data of a of one object we go for a copy constructor by by passing the object as a parameter mm -hmm. we create the copy constructor mm -hmm. Okay, and Next. there are some set of rules for must be followed yes. in the constructor. Mm -hmm. The constructor should not have any return type. Re constructor call must be the first line of the first line of first line. Mm -hmm. So we cannot call a constructor inside a methods, okay. but we can call methods inside a constructor. Very good. So, for example, if the constructor, if I'm going to give any return type, is it throwing any compile time error or runtime error? Yeah, it will not throw any compile time or any any error. It mm -hmm. will take as a method. Okay. It will not take as a constructor. It will take as a separate method. Okay. What are the garbage collection? You know, like that. So garbage collection means if there are any unreferenced objects, if there are any no variable is pointing to a object, so there are the unreferenced objects. Mm -hmm. So the garbage collection collects the objects and removes them, removes them from the memory to Very clear good. them. To clear the memory. Okay. So what is the method you can call if you want to call explicitly? We can call the we can call the system dot gc is a method which mm -hmm. calls the finalize and by the by the system dot gc we will call the finalize method. Finalize method. Okay. So tell me about the different different types of rules to achieve method overriding and overloading. Method overloading means the same method with the same functionality but with a different specifications. Okay. Same specification with different implementation. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have a two methods. We have a method with no arguments, and we have another method with arguments, but with the same name. Okay. So this is the method overload. The best example for method overloading is system dot print dot print system dot out dot print mm -hmm. And also we have in collections we have a we have two methods add method. Mm -hmm. One one will take the object. What is the main method. intention of overloading? Overloading to Keep the specification same, okay. but the functionality should be different. Okay. So for that for that concept, we go for the method over overloading. Okay. Coming to method overloading, method overriding can be achieved only by the inheritance. If okay. a class extends another class, hmm. by that time we can achieve the method overriding. Okay. Method overriding is if we uh, if we are unsatisfied with the parents class functionalities, okay. we override the method in the child class and we implement the required our required functionality to that required implementation to that so okay. for that we go for the method overriding and method overriding is the runtime polymorphism which okay. can be achieved in the runtime okay what is transient keyword transient is a keyword if a data is traveling from network to hide the sensitive data mm -hmm. we use the transient keyword so uh, on which scenario you will be going to use 
like what is the concept you used for it like where you used so you have a private right for example yeah. to hiding the data then why should i go for a transient what is the difference like how you are related to this you know coming to private transient is a keyword you mentioned for securing the data yeah. right yeah when, Tra- private means it cannot be called from different classes or mm-hmm. outside of the classes mm-hmm. but it will but by using the setters and getters so what is the meaning of you mentioned something like traveling the data from one place to another place over the network what is that means what is that means we have a database okay and we have the we have to access the data from the from a application hmm. from suppose we have a rtc application mm-hmm. and also we have a irct app- application mm-hmm. so from ir from in paytm we can book train tickets and mm-hmm. also in the red bus we can book train tickets okay so the same data the same data is traveling from the one application to another application mm-hmm. in that in that process to hide the sensitive data if so the sensitive data means we, we have our passwords and everything mm-hmm. so it should not be visible to anyone so it will show null multiple inheritance is possible in java or not no multiple inheritances can't be achieved achieved in java because mm-hmm. we have, suppose example we have a three three classes suppose we have a class a class b and class c mm-hmm. if this class a and class b if we extend to the class c in case suppose we extend the, to the class c but in the class a and class b if we have the same methods or functional with the function different functionalities or anything mm-hmm. but the with the same name if we extend these two classes to the third class it will there will be ambiguity occurs what is the meaning of ambiguity ambiguity means like in our terminology in our regular terminology we can say that a confusion okay so it will confuse it will be it will create an ambiguity to call which method it need to be called okay so can you tell me uh, is there any way to stop finally block yeah we can stop the finally block by using the system uh, we can stop the finally block by using the system dot exit okay in that exit method what are the arguments it is going to we can pass a, we can pass arguments as a, of any integers we can pass okay zero or one okay good so if i am going to give a return in the try block the finally block will execute or not if we if we keep anything or if there is any error or any return or anything in the try block mm-hmm. the finally block will definitely execute okay the, we can only stop the finally block with mm-hmm. the system dot exit method only okay if i have a try yeah. and then catch yeah. in the first catch i have a exception yeah. in the second catch i have a runtime exception okay. so then what happens like so as we are first caughting the parent class parent mm-hmm. exception exception is a parent for the every mm-hmm. exception so mm-hmm. first we are caughting the exception after that we are caughting the runtime exception runtime mm-hmm. exception is the child child of the exception okay so the first exception first we mention the first we caught the exception so mm-hmm. the if there is any error in the try, try block the first exception the what the code inside the exception is it going to be compiling it no though it, it will not going to be compiled Okay. compile the method so inside the finally can i go on keep try catch yeah inside finally we can keep the inside finally. the catch can i keep yeah, try inside catch? the catch also we can keep the try and catch yeah do you have anything about collections what is the difference between collections and arrays collections arrays means arrays is a index based homogeneous of homogeneous elements of same type mm. which can be stored in a single variable okay so but coming to the coming to the collections collections is a heterogeneous we can store heterogeneous and homogeneous elements in a collections okay so in collection can be a resizable array okay but in arrays there is a fixed size okay. the maximum size we can store in a array is the maximum value of the integer very good so coming to the arrays we cannot create objects for a primitives hmm. but we can create a objects for a array of, array of primitive data types okay so coming to collections it is a resizable array and every collection every every collection implements serializable and clonable con clonable hmm. interfaces what are these two interfaces these two interfaces are the marker interfaces what is marker interface marker interfaces are the interfaces which do not have any specifications or anything but it provides the capability to the classes which implements them very good 